Aaron Jones, Jaden Reed, and Robert Rochelle did not participate. Limited were Jair, Devondre, Kenny Clark, A.J. Dillon, Josiah DeGuara, Rudy Ford, Rashawn Gary, Eric Stokes, and Dontavian Wicks. Did Reed suffer a setback at Detroit? Uh, no setback. Is Jair trending in the right direction, or is it just the same as it's been week after week? Yeah, I think we'll have to wait and see. With uh, back to Jaden, um, I know it's hard for rookies to play without any practice at all. But could a rookie play if he practices tomorrow? Do you I mean is he good enough with the offense? Everything that yeah, I think so. Okay. Matt, going back and looking at uh, Jordan's first start, and then kind of comparing it right to what he's put on film the last month or so, something that's really striking is his eye discipline, keeping his eyes up in the face of the rush. Something that. That first outing in Kansas City, I think you saw his kind of eyes drop a lot. He never looks at the rush now. Is that something you drilled? Is that something you worked on? Or is that just a product of playing more? Um, it's something that we've definitely talked about. It's not something that you, you talk about a lot, but just obviously getting your eyes in the right place, keeping your eyes downfield and trying to feel the rush. Um, but I do think that's a byproduct of probably his maturation as a player and playing more and trusting what's going on around him. Uh, I think the first time we first go around versus these guys a couple of years ago, they brought a lot of heat and, um, you know, they were effective with it. Tucker's had a couple weeks in a row where he's been a playmaker for you after we, we hadn't really seen that before. Then I'm curious, behind closed doors and practice, did you see that this was coming on from them? Were there signs that, that this was on the horizon? Yeah, I think so. Um, He's, he's gotten better in every phase of the game. I think he's more confident in what he's doing and just playing faster. So, and you could see it really because most of the reps that he was getting were when he was run blocking, and you could see his improvement in the running game, um, limited reps in the pass game. And then obviously with what happened to Luke, naturally that provides more opportunity, and he's taken advantage of it, and he's done a really nice job. He sold that block on Hutchinson for the, the touchdown. Yeah, yeah, I thought he did a great job with it. Um, you know, went out there and executed it well. Matt, you, you said watch all. The, you don't get to obviously watch all the games on Sundays. So, like when you go back and watch the Chiefs, all these games, has it surprised you at all just how much the defense has at times had to you know be be the support for that for the Chiefs offense? You know, because when you think Chiefs offense, you think of Mahomes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you think of them first, but that defense, uh, what, what have they showed you? Yeah, they're, I, I just think it's a complete football team in every phase. They're one of the top in the league, um, whether it's offense, defense, or we're special teams. So it pre presents a lot of challenges. Certainly their ability to get to the quarterback has been big for, for them. Um, I think, like I mentioned yesterday, Spags does an unbelievable job of just giving you some, some tough looks. From an offensive perspective, they do a really good job of keeping a lid on the secondary and not allowing a bunch of explosive plays, which typically when you give up explosive plays, that's usually going to lead to points. So they do a really good job with that. they got really good players that, that have um, – that they play fast and they play physical and just it's really sound – it's sound scheme. As Matt, they like to have Snead shadow number one receivers. Just what, what do you see there when, when you watch him on film and – do you kind of do you expect he would shadow maybe come Sunday night because you might be a tricky team to shadow? Yeah, I, I don't know. I you know we always play that game in terms of what we think they're going to do. Uh, certainly, I don't want to share that right now. But uh, yeah, I think he's he's just a really he's a, a guy that competes every snap. You have to earn it versus this guy. Uh, he's going to contest everything. He plays sticky coverage, and he's going to challenge you at the line of scrimmage. He does a really good job. He'll get up in your face, and he'll quick jam you. Um, and it makes it very difficult on all the receivers he's played. And he's gone against some, some pr pretty damn good receivers this year. Matt, there's a rep in Detroit where you slide the line away from Hutchinson. Myers snaps the ball and then loops over to take him after being chipped by a tight end. And you have AJ over. they got three guys throwing at one dude. Is something like that something you already have installed as far as a protection plan, or is that 
something you specifically draw up dependent on who you're facing that with? Yeah, I would say that um, certainly you have a plan going into every game. And dependent upon who you're playing, um, you always want to take away the most effective rushers if you can. Now, sometimes they'll present some looks that don't allow that to happen. If they cover everybody down or whatever, um, that can dictate some of the protection schemes that we do. But um, I think that was a, a that one was a particular play pass, and uh, that we just had schemed up for that game. You took the ball after winning the coin toss last week, and that obviously worked out pretty well for you. It kind of set the tone for the game. This is another game where. You, you, Fast starts pretty important. How much does your decision on, the, on whether to take the ball or not, does home or, or, or road factor into that at all, or what, what does factor into it? No, I think it's just kind of a feel thing, um, who you're playing. Um, and it was more, I would say, going back last week, just the mindset that I wanted everybody to have and just that we were going to come out, we were going to be aggressive, and I, thought, I think you saw it in the first play. And... Um, I think it, it kind of got us going a little bit. Yeah, you said a lot of nice things about Jonathan Owens um, with Rudy kind of back in the mix. How do you view that situation? Has he done enough where you, you probably, he probably has earned the right to stay in there, or what do you think? Yeah, that's, that's always a tough one. Um, anytime you got two players that you feel really good about, um, especially when somebody's coming back from an injury, um, so that's something that we're kind of working through right now. And uh, but the bottom line is we have confidence in both those guys going out there and being being able to execute and help our defense. Matt, on offense, how how aggressive do you feel you've been on fourth down calls? How much thought do you have to put in that during the week? Do you trust your defense to back up? And on the other side about punts, you know we've learned with being with you the last couple of years that. It's not so much hang time and distance, but where the ball lands. How's Daniel done on that end? Yeah, I think Daniel's done a great job. Um, you know, last week he was he was really good pinning. Anytime you can pin somebody inside their own twenty yard line four times, that's that's a pretty effective day. Um, but as far as the fourth down, I, I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I'll let you guys judge that. But I mean, I'd like to think that we're we're pretty aggressive in terms of when we feel like we have a good chance to to gain the first down. I mean, there was a there was one last week that you could argue we we're up 14 points, and do you take the points there on, on fourth and a half a yard, or do you really try to, you know, score another touchdown and really put them in the hole, and it didn't work out. So um, I think every situation is a little bit different. Certainly I've got Connor in my ear. Uh, Connor Lewis does a great job, and, He's always he always wants to go for it, so uh, he kind of nudges me that way. Now, what's the hardest part about depending on scripted plays, extended plays? Yeah, you just gotta you need all eleven guys just busting their butt, trying to get to the quarterback, covering their man in the in, in the back end. We call that plastering. Um, so it's just and this guy's one of the best at it. He does a great job of creating those off schedule plays and. Um, he can also use his legs to, to gain a lot of yards. So uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us, obviously, and our guys are going to have to give maximum effort every play. Sort of along those lines, you obviously had with Aaron for all those years ago. I mean, where do you start with Mahomes as far as coming up with the game plan? I mean, he's, he's seen everything. He's got the arm talent. He's got the legs. I mean, he's like Aaron. He's you know, he's one of, the, one of the legends. Yeah, it's it's a great challenge. I think it's a great challenge every time you go against these these great quarterbacks. And certainly, Coach Reed and his staff have they've done a great job with multiple quarterbacks over his his time uh, going back, you know, to Philly and even before that. So, um, yeah, it's it is a really good challenge. But where do we start? We start by watching the tape and trying to figure out what what they might want to try to do to us and, and make sure we try to negate some of that stuff. You said the Chiefs are a complete football team. I, I know you're only as good as your last game and you're not going to make any grand pronouncements, but your offense has played pretty well lately. Your defense has done its part. I know Rich would like the special teams to be a little bit better, but are you at least starting to feel like you're kind of starting to become a, a little more of a complete football team the way things have gone? I, I think we're improving. 
and I'll leave it at that. Like, we got a great challenge in front of us, and we're going to have to play our best ball to give ourselves a chance. I mean, this was one of the premier teams in the National Football League, and they've been one of the top, uh, one of the most consistent teams over the last few years in terms of being able, obviously, multiple Super Bowls. So, um, you know, I just want our guys to continue to stay focused on what we need to do to continue to improve on a daily basis in order for us to go out there and play our best ball. Two more, please. When you think back to Jordan's performance in 2021 against the Chiefs, was there anything in that game that made you think this could be our guy? Well, you know, I went back and obviously watched that game and, and – um, this game is about scoring points, and obviously when you, when you score seven points in a game, that's not good enough. But I, what, there were some things that happened in that game that um, were encouraging, especially when you kind of reflect and think back in, in that moment in time. I just thought I, I loved his resiliency throughout the course of the game. And, he, you know, he never, got, he never got down, and that's tough to do, especially when you're struggling. Uh, we had a couple opportunities. I think we we missed a field goal, and we got another one blocked in that game, if I recall correctly. Um, and then we scored late in the game. But I thought there there were some some plays in there. Uh, I've said it multiple times. I think we could have done a better job as a staff of, of having probably better answers for some of the situations we were in. Um, but you know, you live and you learn and you move on and hopefully this time around we'll have a better plan for what they want to try to do.